Hey guys, welcome to Mail Monday, a weekly series that's not so much about the gameplay, but instead is about your questions and my answers to them. Let's do this. I recently broke up with my girlfriend. We'd only been dating for around six months and have been separated for about a month. She asked me in person whether I was up for a friends with benefits with her. I said, yeah, sure, at the time, but now I'm not so sure whether it's a good idea, especially with my ex. What are your thoughts and opinions on the matter, and how do you think I should proceed? Love the videos. Keep up the good work. Man, there's a guy in me that just wants to say, like, get some, get some, get some. This is awesome. You know, friends with benefits. Who doesn't want that? How perfect would this be? And there's not really a guy in me that came out all wrong. That, yeah. But there's a part of me that wants to say, you know, this sounds like an incredible situation. You should go for it. What could be better? But, you know, there's another part of me that looks at this and says, like, this is not so awesome. Like, I... I don't think I'm wired for a friends with benefits situation. I never had one, you know, back in my single days. I, I think that, like me personally, I wouldn't take it very well. I would get attached. I would get jealous, you know. Are you the only friends with benefits she has going on? I wonder about that. This whole notion that you're, like, this intimacy stuff, this, this sex, I'll say, is the cornerstone of intimacy. It, it does a lot to sort of bring two people together, to share this moment in time, to... You know, I, I it's almost like sharing your most trusted secret. And, you know, to do that casually, you know, not everyone's wired for that. You know, I, I like me personally, I think I'd be saying, like, you share that with him too? You share that with him? Like, you know, we don't have anything here and that's the deal. Like, you, you do this and you don't have anything. So, um, sorry about the phone. That, uh, I like me personally, I wouldn't do it. But if it's your thing, then knock yourself out because, uh, you know, it, it sounds like you've got your head on straight based on what I can see. A quick note on this one before I start reading it. Uh, he leads off with, my name is this, I'm this old, and I live here. Um, even if you guys slip and are not very anonymous when you write to me, I take that stuff super seriously. Uh, I, I wouldn't want you to get into, you know, I wouldn't want you to have extra hardship because you wrote to me. So uh, anyway, that that's if you see something that's been rewritten or redacted, that's usually why I'm, I'm protecting the people that wrote to me. So I've been told that I'm bright and I could get great marks, but I'm very lazy. I have no motivation to do any work in and out of school. All I do is play video games and play football. I fail at all my subjects except for history. I don't have any real friends. I haven't had a girl in over two years and I don't see a happy future for myself. I am depressed. I've tried suicide hotlines and seeing counselors, but none of it works. The only thing keeping me from suicide is my family. I don't have any idea what to do. All right, man. I, I, I've been where you are. I actually have a huge commentary coming out this week. It's like 40 minutes in two parts where I talk about my experience with what you're going through right now. Um, what I can see that you can't see because you're in the midst of it is the end of it. It feels hopeless. It feels like <laughs> this is going to be your forever situation. Look, nothing is going my way. I'm at a low point. Uh, I'm thinking about just ending this because it's not working out for me. I hear you. I, I get that. What you don't see is the end. W what you don't understand is that you know this thing is about to get good. Um, you know, I I was just talking to a friend last night and he was having trouble with alcohol he got fired uh, he um things were not going right for him uh, big stuff too right it wasn't like you know a 13 year old girlfriend broke up with him his career was over his life was over and and you know he was just struggling and you know he's a grown up but like you know he was crying about it that was nine months ago. Where he is right now is he's on pace to make $100,000. His career is going gangbusters. Things are working out for him. He's winning at life. Achievement unlocked. Career. It's huge. And it's. <laughs> I'm so happy that things are going his way. And these things that feel hopeless, that feel endless, that you know, you, you don't think is going to work for you, will. It's not nearly as hopeless as you think it is. And you just need to give yourself a little bit of time to recover from this. That's, 
That's what I wish that I could get you to understand. I wish there was a repeatable formula for getting out of depression. If there is, I don't know it. Like for me personally, I struggled with uh, the winters that happen in, in the northeast of the U.S. It's kind of gray. It's kind of hard. Um, and, you know, when springtime would come, my spirits would lift. That, that was how it worked for me. You know, if that worked for everyone, it'd be as simple as that, right? Like move to a sunny climate, um, you know, wait for springtime, you'll be finished. It probably doesn't work for everybody. You know, once you get this taste of success, then you, you start getting more and more. That is pretty, you know, true of everybody. Once things start going your way, then you'll expect things to start going your way and, and, and things will get better and better and better. So, um, uh, hang in there. I, you know, wow, what sucky advice. Hang in there. It, this ends. It really does. It, it really will get better. And if you give it some time, then you know, you're know you going to have that taste of success and the, the motivation will return. And you'll find something that ignites your passion for anything. And that will be you know, the, the starting point, the leaping point for which you start to base the rest of your success on. So, um, you yeah, know, I'm with you, man. It, it'll get better. I promise. Don't give up. Hey, Woody, I'm 13 and I got robbed. When it happened, I was in my room playing Minecraft and the alarm goes off. So I jump out of bed and I grab my golf club and I see the robber there, but he had his face covered. So he ran out because my dad was there and the police came and took fingerprints. They couldn't get a match and now I'm scared to even go to sleep. Do you have any advice to give to stop being scared? Mail Monday or PM would be great. Man, I'm right there with you. People who've never been robbed don't know what a traumatic experience it is, right? You would think it would be something along the lines of a car accident, like a little scary at the moment, a financial loss, but then you're over it. That's that's how car accidents go, at least, you know, to me. But being robbed is different. It's not the stuff. You know, I couldn't you know, in retrospect, give a hoot about, you know, the money that, that, that my robber only took cash, about the money that he took. It was really about the violation, the the sense of security that, that I didn't have anymore. And, you know, you think to you, like, in my mind anyway, like, oh, you need security? What are you, a wimp? It, it's, you don't know until you've lost it. The notion that somebody with unknown motives can creep in there and see you while you're sleeping can you know catch you at your most vulnerable you know feel somehow entitled to be into your home your safe place it robs you of innocence it robs you of peace it, it robs you of way more than the stuff that they took it, it robs you of priceless things priceless state of mind and that's what you're going through and i get that I think you should see a counselor. I, I think you should talk to somebody about it because for me, I was slow in getting over this. I, like I had nightmares for a decade. Have you ever had nightmares for a decade? Probably not because you're 13, but that's, that's a lot to live through. And in retrospect, like I, I should have gotten some help. You know, it was not a small thing for me. And just like you on like quote unquote game day, I was also pretty brave. You know, I faced the the burglar and, and, you know, shouted him down and did my thing. But then it had a huge impact on me after the fact. And, you know, as far as how to get over it, you know, I, I think you need to do something to bring that sense of security back, whether that's a better lock on your door, which brings its own challenges. I mean, you're 13, your parents might want to do something. I'm mean, needing to get in your room for your own safety at some point. I don't know. But um, you, you need to do something to get back that feeling of security that you've just been robbed of. That's, that's, uh, that's my advice to you. And you need to talk to somebody. So here's the situation. I'm in love with my best friend. She's literally the most amazing girl I've ever met. It's not your usual friend zone, though. She's my best friend. We talk about everything. But within the past two years, I've fallen for her. This summer, we are, me and her, going on a mission trip upstate, and we're going to be alone quite a lot in that week span. I need help. What do I do? Should I make a move? Should I keep in mind that I've asked her out twice and I've been denied twice? But my confidence level has grown significantly in the last year, and her attitudes towards me has shifted. What do I do? Make a move? Thanks for your advice. 
I don't care if you release my name in a Mail Monday video. I wouldn't do that. I just need help because I don't know what to do, and if I mess it up, I'll never forgive myself. In my opinion, do you make a move? Damn right you make a move. Of course you make your move. This might be a good opportunity as well. Why? Because you don't live a life of regret. There's no way that you're going to sit there and look back on these years and be like, man, if I just let her know how I felt, maybe she would have been mine. That's not how we roll here, right? We're going to do better than that. Having said that, if she says no, it is absolutely time to move on. She is not the only great girl out there. And if she knows that you're stuck in her friend zone forever and ever and ever, then you know she's not going to have the kind of respect for you that you need her to have for you. That, that Knowing that you're always there anytime she wants you is, is not the place that you want to be, and it's not attractive to girls. I think it's time for you to get another girl. Two things can happen. One, you'll either like that other girl and things will be great. Or two, she'll see you as somebody that's not just there waiting for her all the time. And maybe look at you in a new way. Look at you more desirably than she looked at you before. But you cannot just stay in her friend zone forever. So I know we've dealt with friend zone questions before, but it's been a while, so I thought I'd tackle it one more time. Uh, good luck to you, man. I hope it works out. All right, if you like Mail Monday, be sure to give it a like. I always appreciate it when you guys do that. If you're new around here, you can subscribe by clicking in that box in the top right. Two vids you may have missed. The top one was a pretty frightening experience from last night as I uh, as I record this. And the bottom one is a channel update to let you guys know what's going to be going on, some changes making uh, over the next week or so. So, uh, yeah, have a good day.